Why Tokyo, you say? Why not Fagel, Djibouti, or Parkfield, California? I'm so glad you asked, Linnea. Tokyo consists of dozens of hazards in which our research team can assess, as it sits on a plate line that receives almost 90% of the world's earthquakes. <laughs> That's a lot of earthquakes. <laughs> That's a lot of data. Each year in Tokyo, there can be up to 2,000 earthquakes that can be felt by people. Japan experiences a tremor at least every five minutes. Although numerous earthquakes are treacherous to a society, statistics can be required to ameliorate towns and communities. Sorry, but is this an English channel correct? <coughs> Let me rephrase. Earthquakes may be harmful as a risk of destructing property and lives, but scientists can gather data from geological hazards to improve on safety as well as reading earthquakes. For an example, scientists have developed a seismic network to locate and measure an earthquake. Our team has partnered up with the company that has brought you the article. Locating and measuring earthquakes. This article stated that each semestic station in the network measures the movement of the ground at the site. In an earthquake, the slip of a block of a rock over another releases energy that makes the ground vibrate. That vibration pushes the adjoining piece of ground, causing it to vibrate, and thus the energy travels out from the earthquake in a wave. As the wave passes by a seismic station, that piece of ground vibrates, and this vibration is recorded. Wow, sounds like the more earthquakes there are, the more data Japan has to create a new safety precautions. Indeed, you're right. In fact, Japan is one of the best established safety precautions for various geological hazards that may arise. That's part of the reason why this new channel decided to bring you the latest news from Japan. And when we come back, seismologist Maggie Peebers is going to discuss the safety precautions established in currently in Tokyo, Japan. Welcome, Dr. Maggie Fever, seismologist here to discuss earthquake safety in Tokyo, Japan. Hey, Maggie, do you want to hear a joke? Okay. What's Nina's favorite clothing brand? I don't know. Conversion Couture! <laughs> okay, well, other than that, I don't think it's just me, but for, for me as well as the viewers, what's a seismologist? I'm glad you asked. Seismology is the study of se seismic waves, energy waves caused by rocks suddenly breaking apart within the earth or the slipping of tectonic plates. So how, si si so how have citizens, especially children in Tokyo, Japan, adapted to these vicious ongoing quakes? Well, my friend Peter Foster from The Telegraph said it best. Every school child in Japan will be familiar with earthquake drills in which alarms sound and children retreat under their desks to shelter from falling debris. The drills take place every month with the children being taught to go headfirst under the desk and clean the table legs until the quake is over. If the children are out in the playground, they rush to the center of any open space to avoid being hit by falling debris. I'm aware that many schools that experience frequent art earthquakes go through these drills. So what makes Japan's safety precautions so special, Maggie? The local fire department also takes groups of children into earthquake simulation machines to familiarize with them with the sensation of being in earthquakes. Schools with two stories or more may have an evacuation, which children can slide down to safety. Wow, that's incredible. Just goes to show that once dangerous country with continuous geological hazards has learned to enhance these dangers in such an organized method of safety. Now that we know children within the schools are greatly protected from these dangers, what about, what about adults around the country? Buildings are made earthquake proof with, with the aid of deep foundation and massive shock absorbers that dampen seismic energy. Another method allows the base of a building to move se semi-independently to its sub, uh, superstructure, reducing the shaking caused by a quake. Overall, when it comes to earthquake preparations, Japan is fortunately quite advanced. Moving trains come to immediate stop and houses are built to withstand strong shaking, to name a few. In addition to this, the Japan Meteorological Agency provides residents in Japan with earthquake early warnings. This is a new system that issues prompt alerts just as an earthquake starts, providing valuable seconds for people to protect themselves before strong tremors arrive. Thanks for coming to the show, Dr. Maggie Peebers.
I think that segment really used multiple pieces of compelling evidence to justify why we chose our research team to position in Tokyo, Japan. Japan. Hang up. <laughs> After this commercial break, we will go live to our news reporter, Aria, on the scene. An active earthquake here in Tokyo, Japan. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. Welcome back. Uh, that commercial has felt like day and night, literally. We are now going live to Aria on the scene of an active earthquake here in Tokyo, Japan. I'm standing here in Tokyo, Japan while an earthquake is currently taking place all around me. That's nerve-wracking. How can our viewers in Tokyo stay safe during this or any earthquake? If you are currently driving a vehicle, pull over wherever possible and stop. If you are currently in bed, A, you're lucky, and B, stay in bed. Many of you desire outdoors. If that is the case, stay outside. If you're in a public building, follow the instructions of the attendant. And always remember, protect your head under a surface, such as a table, in case of falling objects. I'm terrible in chaotic situations. What things should someone not do during an earthquake? Do not position yourself in a doorway. Run outside, slow down in a car, or worry about turning off gas in your kitchen. Okay, so I know you're in... You're dying and all, but what will you tell us more about earthquakes since you're kind of the expert? My pleasure, but first I'm going to insert a self promo. I, as well as Dr. Maggie Peavers, created, created a UPSIS, a website for seismologists to educate themselves. A recent article read that earthquakes are usually caused when rock underground suddenly breaks along a fault. This sudden release of energy causes the seismic waves to that made the ground shake. When two blocks of rock or two plates are rubbing against each other, they stick a little. They don't just slide smoothly. The rocks catch on each other. The rocks are still pushing against each other, but not moving. After a while, the rocks break because of all the pressure that's built up. When the rocks break, the earthquake occurs. What happens after the earthquake occurs? During the earthquake and afterward, the plate or the plates or blocks of rock start moving, and they continue to move until they get stuck again. The spot underground where the rock breaks is called the focus of the earthquake. The place right above the focus on top of the ground is called the epicenter of the earthquake. I cannot recall why, but that reminds me of the transform boundaries. Plates sliding sideways past each other is what transform, transform boundaries really are. The lithosphere is neither created nor destroyed at, the, at the, these transform boundaries. Where are transform boundaries located? California San Andreas Fault is a transform boundary, as many transform boundaries are found on the seafloor, where they connect segments of diverging mid-ocean ridges. Okay, I get it now. So both earthquakes and transform boundaries have to do with plates rubbing up against each other. But then wouldn't those two be classified as the same? Not quite. Think of earthquakes as more as the effect of transform boundaries. When transform boundaries rub against each other, they get stuck and pressure builds up, causing potential energy. When, the ener when that energy and pressure is released, an earthquake occurs. So as summary brought to you by COTF. Places where plates slide past each other are called transform boundaries. Although tra transform boundaries are not marked by spectacular surface features, their sliding motion causes lots of earthquakes. The strongest and most famous earthquake along the San Andreas Fault hit San Francisco in 1906. It seems like plate boundaries such as the transform boundaries only cause destruction. Why should I, why should I like these plate boundaries if earthquakes are the result? That's such a good question. In general, the process is actually very important to life on Earth. Several billion years ago, the surface of our Earth became formed into puzzle pieces called plates. These process trapped uh, this process trapped our atmospheric carbon dioxide into rocks and stabilized our climate, making Earth habitable. Thank you so much for coming on the show. If you're if you viewers feel like you will miss her, no worries. She'll be back to explore some of the more continuous hazards in our favorite place, Tokyo, Japan. But in the meantime, want to hear another joke? All right. A dolphin walks into a bar. Okay. The bartender says, well, that was a big bloody tsunami. <laughs> Wait, why did you just tell a tsunami joke? Because that's our next segment. As you can see, the central Tokyo is located on the coast of a rather long Tokyo Bay, which is relatively minor tsunamis. However, he should understand that tsunami is a very rare event, even in such an earthquake-prone place, which is Tokyo. 
Most of the time, tsunamis are a result of earthquakes, which is understandable why Tokyo would experience these vicious waves. These vicious waves. <laughs> Let's dive deeper into what a tsunami actually is and what play boundaries have to do with this horrific geological hazard. Subduction zones are potential tsunami locations. Most tsunamis are caused by earthquakes ge generated in the subduction zone. Subduction zones are areas where an oceanic plate is being forced down into the mantle by plate tectonic forces. The friction between the subducting plate and the overriding plate is enormous. Specifically in Tokyo, Japan, a 9.1 magnitude earthquake took place 231 miles northeast of Tokyo at a depth of 52.2 miles on March 11, 2001 at 2.46 in the afternoon. The earthquake causes a tsunami with 30-foot waves that damage several nuclear reactors in the area. It is the largest earthquake ever to hit Japan. Our enemy news team, CNN, confirmed that the combined total of confirmed deaths and missing is more than 22,000 nearly 20,000 deaths and 2,500 missing. Deaths were caused by the initial earthquake and tsunami and by post-disaster health conditions. But I mean, dying in a tsunami isn't so bad because the earth is giving you a wave goodbye. Um. Hey, Linnea, I have a joke for you. In the word tsunami, the T is silent. In the honest, the H is silent. In the word island, the S is silent. In the word Q, the U is silent. And in your jokes, everyone is silent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see how it is, but I don't see how tsunamis occur in relation to plate boundaries. As a matter of fact, what are plate boundaries? It looks like we should take a refresher course on plate boundaries and how tsunamis are actually generated. We must first understand how to make a tsunami before attempting to examine it and assess the risk of the tsunami at a particular place on the planet, especially in Tokyo, Japan. Earthquakes and volcanoes generate the great majority of tsunamis, and the theory of plate tectonics explain the cause of earthquakes and volcanoes. So we'll start with we'll, so we'll start with the world's briefest review of plate tectonics. The Earth's lithosphere is broken up into a bunch of discrete pieces called plates that move around the surface of the planet. The motion is driven by the flow of the mantle rock beneath the plates and by the forces the plates exert at their boundaries where they touch each other. These are three distinct types of plate boundaries shown illustrated by the drawings or drawing somewhere on the screen, hopefully. So as a rem reminder, at transform boundaries, two plates side slide past each other. The San Andreas Fault in California occurs at this type of plate boundary. At divergent plate boundaries, plates move away from each other. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a divergent boundary. At a convergent boundary, plates move towards each other. The Kasagit uh, don't know how to pronounce it. Subduction zone is in the U.S. Pacific Northwest is in a convergent plate boundary. I know it was such a long time ago, but do you remember all the educational content we just went over about earthquakes? Well, these earthquakes go hand in hand with tsunamis. An important fact to mention is that earthquakes happen when plates move with respect to each other because the friction and stress at the edges of plates prevents them from slipping smoothly at their boundary. In an earthquake to generate a tsunami, you need water as well as a vertical motion. If an earthquake happens far away from the body of water, it probably won't disturb the water too much. Therefore, no tsunami, no tsunami is expected. Next, you need, next you need a vertical disturbance. Picture this, provided by Penn State. You have a bathtub full of water and a hard back book. You dip the book into the bath water spine first and move the book back and forth long ways. What do you observe? Not much, except you've ruined your book. Now, if you hold the book with its flat side on the surface, the water on the flat side on the surface of the water and move the book up and down in the water, you should generate some big waves as the vertical motion you have imposed on the water 
column is transferred to horizontal motion as the wave travels away from the source. This is basically how tsunamis are generated. Once again, tsunamis are very dangerous and should not be viewed as any less. But our research team has desired to be positioned in Tokyo, Japan to gather data to prevent further tsunamis. In addition, the safety precautions established here in Tokyo are very advanced. Keep your thinking caps on, ladies and gentlemen, because when we come back, Hydraulis, Brandon, she will be here to talk about actions to take during tsunamis. So don't flip the channel on us unless you have already. Welcome back, boys and squirrels, for our special guest, Dr. Shi, to bring you the latest sister safety precautions during a tsunami. So tell us, doctor, for the viewers that may be unaware, what is a hydrologist? A uh, hydrologist is a scientist who researches distribution, circulation, and physical properties of underground and surface, surface water. I, myself, specialize in tsunamis at the moment in an attempt to save lives such as dangerous waves. So tell us, Brandon, what should you do in the instance of a tsunami? Well, first, it's important to recognize the warning signs of a tsunami. These include uh, official alerts via commercial radio, si sirens, t TV, uh, television, uh, or other media, and, and NOAA, a long duration of an earthquake, ranging from one minute or more. An earthquake that may occur is very strong. As a result, it may be it may be difficult to move or walk. There might be damage to structures. Objects may fall uh, may begin to fall. Loud noises could be projected by the ocean, and such and sudden changes in sea level may <clears throat> be pre presented. Wow, such fascinating stuff! You can't get better content than this, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me, Doctor, what action should be taken during a tsunami? Protect. <laughs> Protection is vital. In order to protect yourself from an earthquake before a tsunami occurs, you must drop, get low, in a cover, protect yourself from falling objects, and hold on, grab to anything stable, any stable objects, if possible. Get to a high ground, preferably very far inland. Next, be alerted alert to shifts of ocean waters to serve a sign of, tsunami, of a tsunami, such as a sudden rise or draining of seawater. Then what? Listen carefully to any alarms and emergency information regarding the intensity of tsunami. Remember to not wait. Evacuate. Lastly, in the instance of being in a boat, Go out to sea. Whoa, look at the time. What? Get out, this doesn't concern you. It's time to play Play Boundary. <laughs> time to play Play Boundary Boogie. Brought to you by our producer Blair. The game is simple. Create a boogie or a dance to represent each of the plate boundaries. Hi, I'm Bailey Bob Joe, and I'm representing the Boundary Plate Boundary. Now we have to do a dance. Okay, let's get now. Okay. To the right, to the right. That's the left. That's the We're sliding. Okay, and then this is conversion boundary. No, I'll be left. No, I'll be left. I bet you are just so mad that you didn't, you couldn't burst into a cringy dance, Nina. Almost so mad that you could explode. Well, good, because today we are going to discuss volcanoes. Nina. What? What did the volcano say after it erupted? It's a lovely day. <laughs> Anyways, let's focus on what a volcano is. A volcano is a mountain that opens downward to a pool of molten rock below the surface of the earth. When pressure builds up, eruptions occur. Gases and rocks shoot up through the opening and spill over and fill the air with lava fragments. Eruptions can cause lateral blasts, lava flows, hot ash flows, mudslides, avalanches, falling ash and floods, volcano eruptions have been known to knock down entire forests. An erupting volcano can trigger tsunamis, flash floods, earthquakes, mud flows, and rock falls. Wait, so how do volcanoes form? That's easy. Volcanoes are formed and magma from within the Earth's upper mantle works its way to the surface. 
At the surface, it erupts to form lava flows and ash deposits. Over time, as the volcano continues to erupt, it will get bigger and bigger. So now that we know what a volcano is and how they form, let's look at the inside of a scoop regarding the connection of the plate boundaries with the geological hazards. OSU said it best that at divergent margin, two tectonic plates are moving apart in magma that is generated in the upper mantle flows upward to fill in the space. This magma is probably generated at the depths that are shallower than those of the hotspot magmas. People argue that whether the magma forcing its way to the surface causes the plates to move apart or whether the plates move apart and the magma just reacts to it and fills in the space. Perhaps it's just a combination of those two. The most ex extensive example of this type of vol volcanism, <laughs> thanks for that, Nina, is a system of a Midosan Ridge. Continental examples include the East African Rift, the West Antarctic Rift, and the ba Basin, Basin, and Range provinces in the southern, southern, southwestern USA. But convergent margins are not so innocent in this process either. According to the OSU, the final major place where volcanism originates is at a convergent margin, or also known as subjection zones, where an oceanic plate divides, where an oceanic plate dives under either another oceanic plate or perhaps a continental plate. As the plate gets pushed further and further apart, it starts to give off its violatials. Vitals, volatiles, mostly water, and these migrate up, migrate upwards into the mantle just under the overriding plate. The addition of the these volatiles is the overriding mantle, probably lower than the melting point of the mantle, so the magma is generated. Part of the magma may also be generated by the downgoing plate actually starting to melt as it gets into the hotter and hotter interior. Places like Fagel Djibouti have multiple volcanoes that may act like a ticking time bomb. So now that we have all, so now that we're all familiar with volcanoes and how they operate, let's look at some ways we can stay safe during a volcano eruption. For example, how does one recognize the warning signs of a volcano eruption? The U.S. Geological Survey employs a nationwide volcano alert level system for characterizing conditions: quiet, unrest, eruption at the U.S. volcanoes. Aviation color codes is a system that is color coded. Each color in danger depends on the location. The alert level term, the alert level term is a system that uses intensity words instead of colors, such as normal, advisory, watch, and warning. Precaution wise, the rules are simple. Keep alert for an emergency information. Follow shelter or evacuation orders. If you're told to evacuate, do so early. Areas downstream of the volcanic eruption must be avoided. Keep yourself protected from falling ash. And make sure to not drive in heavy ash fall conditions. That's all we have for plate boundaries, geological hazards, and safety precautions. Not only here in Tokyo, Japan, but for places such as Fagel, California, and so many more. Brought to you by the Freaky Five News Channel. That was our episode on plate boundaries with geological hazards. Stay tuned until next time for more jokes, information, and dancing.